welcome back to this week's uh, Ask the Universe. Um, this week we have Ulla from Denmark, who's going to be the interviewer. And as, as always, I'm super excited about it. I have no idea what she's going to say because we never plan everything. So Ulla, hi. Hi. So nice to have this opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I have a lot of questions. I'll see how long it go. You know, um, the previous interviewers, they had a lot of questions about the, the grid system. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still popping up in my head as well. So I have a few questions. Um, I don't know if you can answer, but uh, I'm curious how many of these energy points or places uh, do you have to activate before the whole system wakes up? 22. Sorry? 22, so it's 12 places. 22, okay. But 22 in total. Yeah, super. Uh, you know, at these times, it's a bit difficult to visit it, these points and our places. Uh, would it help if we gather together uh, in this global grid? Uh, we have uh, this on uh, Facebook, you know. Uh, if we took one by one these places and connected to it, uh, perhaps bring some photos if, and some knowledge about the uh, the the places. It's always good to bring a conscious awareness to uh, the places that we wish to go, but we will need to go there in a physical form as well. Uh, this whole game will be played out by 2024, and then we still have a lot of years until 2030, 36, 32. I don't remember anymore, but over there somewhere. So we still have the time to do. What will be really good is to uh, reconnect to each other and reconnect to the idea and the knowledge that we have to do the grid work of which is meant to be done. Okay. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Uh, what will happen when the whole grid system is activated? When the whole grid system is activated, it will help to recreate balance on Earth. Not fully because there, <laughs> there is a lot of things that will interfere and etc. But it is to help raising the frequency, the base frequency, on earth and to recre recreate more balance. It will also bring more conscious awareness into the people of which is tapped into uh, the energy of which there's freely given and into the consciousness of the places they're stored within the memories of these locations. Okay. Um, I can see there's a lot of people or groups trying to activate uh, diff uh, different uh, grid systems or, or places. Would it yeah. be an idea to join each other or do you have a special... Uh, <laughs> I know you're kind of a key, uh, so you you need to do it on, on your own or in your own way, together with people, of course. So the thing is that a lot of people who link to these grids are linked into them to regain uh, old memories, regain old powers, also linked to, of course, want to help the earth. We all are just following our different uh, journeys and pathways to do what we are sent here to do. If it's individual or if it's as a collective, it doesn't matter. But what is really important is that the one vibrational construction it shouldn't link up with the other at the same time because then it, it's if you have like a, a keychain and you have different keys to lock it up we have different roles yeah. there will be some parts that will be extremely good to link together with because everything is about oneness and connection but there is also a lot of parts where where we really just truly have to feel but is this a group that we are supposed to be with or are they supposed to go by themselves um, and that is not coming from a just mental place, but it's coming from a, a, a place of awareness that that everybody has their own colors and have to fulfill yeah. what lies within that reach of colors. Okay. You have you told me that you would like to go back to some of uh, these places where you are already have been. Is that 
because it's not fully open yet. Uh, the route of what I needed to do has been done ahead the places we have been, but there still is an urge and a need for bringing people there to raise the vibration within their system and to reach a bit deeper in the conscious awareness of which is to be shared with the world. So my main job is done, the places we have been, but the level of consciousness to bring back to this world is not. Also, for example, Egypt, I want to go back to Egypt, but I want to go another place in Egypt. Yeah. I want to go back to Visako uh, because that it is within the soul contract to go back there more than once because a big part of, of this, the, the flow and the people who needs to be running through has to be connected to that location. Yeah. Oh my God, I feel in my heart already. It's such a lovely place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. My soul loves it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I have another question. Um, you know, in these years, a lot of animals, uh, insects, birds uh, are becoming instinct. Um, does it only uh, is it only the activity of the human kind there? Are, um, what can I say? Um, is that is it the human activity that's causing these big problems, or is it also um, a wave in Mother Earth? You know that we are in this special place now. Uh, so it's written it's, it's, somewhere that they are going to be, a lot of creatures are going to be extinct. It is like uh, all a part of creation. So when you make a project like Project Earth, right, you put some cells down here and you put some um, lifelines, things that have to run through and then you see how it, it, how it evolves. So there is like a certain line of this is how it's created. This is where we're meant to go. But there is also a big amount of free space to uh, evolve because or else the universe wouldn't learn anything if there was not space to evolve. Then. Um, so we are operating with possible outcomes at the moment. And possible outcomes is also influencing how we are dealing with the knowledge that we have and how we're dealing with everyday life. And we are a big, big part of the evolutions on good and bad that's going on on Earth because our consciousness level is so high <laughs> that what we do influence the planet quite a lot. We are, we are such a big part of that creation. Okay. Um... That I have kind of the same questions uh, about the climate change uh, because you know it. I'm not aware we have a problem and <laughs> we have a lot of pro problems, but also, uh, and of course, uh, the human side really have a, a huge uh, and an impact on this climate, but also, you know. Sometimes I feel that um, we are also being uh, man manipulated uh, to feel guilt and anxiety and all. And uh, but is it uh, as bad as they say uh, in the media that it's just uh, about time? Where it's almost too late to do something about it and then there will be a huge uh, collapse in the climate system how many times have they said the world would go under yeah exactly. in, in in the life that you have lived yeah uh, three or four times at least <laughs> yeah Mm. So <clears throat> we operate with changes. Changes is here. Changes will come. All these things that Nostradamus had predicted has happened, but <clears throat> it the the influence is not as big and fatal as we thought it would be. For example, he predicted this whole COVID thing. If if you look into it honestly, a lot of us is kind of 
doing pretty well you know mm -hmm. all in all if you look into how it looks in in, in the books saying yeah. that there will be this big pandemic uh it is here yeah sure but we are most of us are, are okay right so um yes climate changes are real yes our planet is shifting yes there is a possible outcome of completely destruction of the planet but it's not the most likely outcome to be rolled into place. Yeah. There will be changes. We would need to change a lot of ways of how we overuse uh, materials on the planet because it does create an energy that is not healthy for us or the environment of which helps us live. It's really stupid. We are, we are laughing at the lemming, you know, the, the animal that killed himself yeah. when it became too many, yeah. and then we're kind of doing it ourselves. Yeah. So that is the funny thing and the paradox of, uh, of human life. It's, it's all the things that we are judging the world for is what we do ourselves. So, exactly. yeah. so we would just have to take a look at ourselves and at our species and everything starts within it's our own everyday choices in our own everyday life it's where it starts yeah and, and no nobody is too small to make a change super <laughs> uh, sometimes you know i get this I, I wouldn't say panic attack but even though you know it um yeah, where will we end, and and so on, and uh, was it all worth being here? Uh, but still, in inside myself, I have this feeling it, it give no sense if it all sh should break down, right? So, but um, sometimes it's quite difficult to find hope, uh, and also uh, I feel sometimes you know uh, I don't want to be. A, that this COVID thing should be, I should be fed up with it. It, it just feels so much in my mind, you know. Um, so sometimes I, I'm, are we being mind controlled or something like that? Or what is going on? Because I feel this heaviness. Uh, and still, I also believe that there's a lot of light and good stuff going on in all this. And I know it's necessary. But uh, I have a tendency to only hang on to the negative sides instead of all the good stuff, if you know. So when we, um, you are a person who yeah. uh, uh, can perceive different vibrations. <clears throat> you can perceive the vibration of love, of sadness, of anger, of resentment, all these kind of things. <clears throat> Outside sources, good or bad, because we play this game of good or bad, are able to be a vibrational match to the emotional states of which you are in. It's not more mind control than it's than you allow it to be honest, okay. right? But what happens is that uh, when you are in a, for me, for example, when I feel I had forty degrees in fever here the other day, not forty, degrees, I had fever and everything yeah. hurt. And my friend, he had COVID and he came over and I was like, I got the COVID. I think I have the COVID, <laughs> you know? And um, the first thing that struck me was fear because I was so low in energy that I was uh, open to perceive a fear of the COVID. What happens with me, because my, my self sense of self is so vivid, was that I took in the whole collective fear of COVID. So I was oh, like, oh, oh, I'm gonna die. Even that I have no fear of the COVID whatsoever. So it was this aha moment where I really was like, why am I just scared? Like, what? what? Like, there's no day tomorrow. Like, what's going on? <laughs> so yeah. when you are in, in a state of being where you are open to perceive uh, these uh, possible outcome, then they are able to enter your system. And it's a matter of how much you identify with it when they are there and how fast you become yeah. conscious that it's just a possible outcome. It's not necessarily yours. No. 
uh, I also have a feeling that something it's about, you know, uh, that it, you have to make your, the changes. There's no one coming saving us, if you understand. Mm -hmm. Am I boring you? No, it's cold. <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult because we previously we, you wanted leaders you know be a lemming and now we just understand that we have to stand by ourselves and our choices and uh, be the change you know we are still created as um, what do you call it flock I don't know what yeah. that is the name is we still created a, a, like we need each other, right? This is a yeah. kind of part of the game. But the individual change and standing up for our own individually uh, authenticity does so that we change the vibration of where we are standing. When we dare to listen to ourselves, it doesn't matter if we are listening to a leader or whatever, as long as that leader is, is uh, a reflection of where we want to go. The yeah. problem is when we do not look inside and just fo follow a leader blindly, then we end up in this matrix where we are doing the whole sheep follow the shepherd kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it is an individual journey, but we are still supposed to group up about it. It's really important that we tap into oneness and not just within small communities, but across the country borders. Because there are family, our soul family is all yeah. over the globe. It's just, yeah. it's not just within one origin. Um, so that is really important to see in the upcoming time. Yeah. Being authentic and being true to our true beliefs inside, whatever they are, and even when they're changing, allows uh, people with the same uh, perception to see us and then we can link up and create an outcome that we wish instead of all the outcomes that we fear yeah uh, please tell me if we're running out of time because I'm just <laughs> uh, we started a little late right mm -hmm. yeah uh, last okay. question okay uh, another question is about the water because um you know, there's a big problem many places and many countries, you can't even drink the water coming out of uh, the, tap. the tap. Exactly. Um, and I have had some discussion with this guy wanting to uh, make uh, reverse osmosis uh, so you could clean the water. But I have a resistance because you, you remove everything also the the minerals and you have pure water uh, and nothing else uh, this uh, destroying the consciousness in in water no you cannot destroy the consciousness so it would be okay they say they can add the minerals later but you know have a huge respect for mother nature that you know how water should be and that yeah. uh, but of course, we have to remove uh, all the physical things, the microplast and uh, yeah, some minerals that's not good for us. Sir. So the good thing is that when we follow evolution, our body and our system is following and adapting to the environment. But if you remove the environment, the changes one place, the difference between that place and all the other places is so big that then you will be ill when you enter the other spaces. So it's like you said, <laughs> in the old days, you used to say, well, a kid needs to go and eat a certain amount of dirt in order of yeah, being yeah. here, right? Yeah. And it's sort of kind of the same thing. What we do need to look into is all the autophistic things that we're putting into things. So for example, the, the microplast and and some of the chemicals uh, of which we're using and, and disposing and not really getting rid of, there is where our focus needs to lie. Like, how yeah. can we prevent that? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with completely clean water. It just feels dead. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, 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 it feels like it's clean. Yes. It can flush out toxins in the, in the body. Yes. But it's not, we, it's not having the vitality and the life force uh that make my heart shine so no. just yeah um so yeah 
that would be my answer to that. So the basic thing would use a kind of filter that could remove uh, the bad the stuff. Bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would for sure. Yeah. Okay, I'll make some quick ones. <laughs> uh, are uh, some of the big masters? Are they going to uh, reincarnate in these times, or have they already done it? Their, their energies are floating here through the the soul streams of which they hold, so the consciousness level of Christ and etc. Mutra and these people it, it's floating here through the veins of people they are tapping into it that part of them is within them um, but what we need to understand is when they were incarnated they were physical forms and what we perceive them as is not who they are in origin no uh, some of them is here in form and shape already but mainly our focus should be on the totality of the unconditionally love. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you have in the previous videos talked a lot about 2024, that uh, the COVID game would be over. But what come instead, you said uh, it's not totally over some other system in our... <laughs> I'm fishing for uh, hope, you know. <laughs> Will there be a new world order or something like that? The possible outcomes is not set 100% in stone yet. These years are really important in order of what will be created afterwards. So I see more outcomes which can come into play, but it's not written in stones yet. So the most important thing we can do is being in the present moment, putting attention to our authenticity, and to see with love. So these three main things is the most important thing in order of uh, attracting the outcome that we wish to enter after 2024. Yeah. And take your time. I am one of the people who get very fast restless, but uh, this time, the start of the year is really about slowing down allowing the tempo to be like da, da. <laughs> um, and and we connecting to yourself and collecting your power for yeah. whatever um, yeah makes a lot of sense but sometimes you you know uh, you have this feeling that, oh i should do more i uh, i should go out I and save the world and uh, i'm just here enjoying <laughs> doing my stuff i know uh, it's what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think this is the end of uh, today. Okay, super. <laughs> I hope I have an opportunity to come back. And uh, it was really nice uh, to, to, to be able to interview you. Yeah, and thank you so much to be with us. And for you guys, if you would like to see Ulla back with more of her super cool questions, let us know right in the comments below. And once again, and always, we're so grateful that you are following. And if you have any questions or any perception that you would like to share in the comments below, and um, we will answer it. So thank you guys, and we will thank see you. you. <laughs> doodoo -doo. doo -doo -doo.